Your sister is celebrating her birthday. She is planning on renting a hall for $300. The meal for each person costs $15. The decorations cost $100. Your parents have given her $1,200. How many people can attend the party? So the most she can spend is $1,200. Maybe she'll spend less or maybe she'll spend exactly $1,200, but that's the most. She's already spent $300 for the hall. She's spending $100 for the decorations, and she knows that each meal costs $15 per person. We don't know how many people, so that's P for people, and $15 for each person. That amount is changing. The amount for the haul and the amount for the decorations don't change, but the amount for the meals is going to change. So 300 plus 100 is 400. That's the flat amount that she has to pay just to get the hall and decorate it. So let's take out the 400. And once we take out the 400, everything left over is going to be spent on the meals. So at this point, let's divide by 15. Divide by each cost of the meal to find out how many people she can invite. So 800 divided by 15. 15 will go into 80. Um, five times, giving us 75, and 15 will go into 50 three times, giving us 45. Okay, well we have a remainder, but she can't invite a portion of a person, so let's forget about this remainder, and she's going to invite 53 people. And this remainder represents money that will be left over. It's a portion of a person. It's a little messy. Let me rewrite that for you. So the remainder um, of the 5 is 5 over 15, and that's going to be a portion of a person, which we know doesn't make sense in real life. You can't have the portion of a person, so we're going to ignore that, and it translates into money left over in this inequality. So the most people she can invite is 53 people, but maybe she wants to invite less. It's up to her.